Joining us from Columbia, head coach Megan Griffith, student athletes Kitty Henderson and Abby Shu. We'll begin with an opening statement from coach, followed by questions for the student athletes, and then followed by questions for coach. Coach. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, just, I want to thank the whole Columbia administration and all the people that came out to support us. I mean, it's the most athletic, you know, electric environment in Ivy Madness that we've ever had. And um, I thought our staff did a phenomenal job making sure that that happened. So major thank you to them. You know, I think there's no secret, you know, that I feel we should be playing in the NCAA tournament. You know, I think, again, it's like we're in the same exact spot we were last year, almost identical spot. Um, you know, we were the first team out essentially last year. And we go to the final of the WNIT against Kansas at Kansas, lose by six or seven. Um, there's no other mid-major teams even on the bubble or in the conversation for the bubble. You know, what are we doing to grow the game? You know, the NCAA talks about wanting to grow the game. And if we just cons consistently put SEC teams in that are 17 and or 15 and 14 or, you know, gotten beat by everybody in the SEC because that conference isn't very good. You know, they just beat each other except for USC and LSU. What are we doing for the game, you know? And I think this is the time of the committee. I hope you're listening. I hope whoever's watching this. You know, we've won 21 of our last 23 games. We won 11 straight heading into this. We beat Princeton when they were ranked top 25 in the country. We did everything we could to build a resume. We played teams and with a new team. We had seven graduating seniors last year. We completely rebuilt a roster. You know, we're being penalized for needing to schedule games when people don't want to play us. You know, I try to play St. John's. I try to play Rutgers. I try to play any local mid power five team or bit good mid major team. I can't even get them on our schedule. So whose fault is that? It's not ours, unfortunately. And we've been competitive every single loss. You know, Duke who actually came to play us, we lost by four. That was a possession game. You know, we lost at Princeton, obviously. Stony Brook's about to win the CAA tomorrow, going to the NCAA tournament. And then our two competitive losses against Florida and Georgia in the Bahamas on neutral court. Um, you know, we shared the regular season championship with Princeton two years in a row, who's a tournament team that's proven to win games in the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, I mean, I could, I could say, I can't say enough about Abby Shue. Um, she's one of the best players in the country. And she needs to be seen. And, it's, and I really hope the committee gives her and this team a chance because if we just keep being in this spot, we're not growing the game. So, thank you. Questions for the student athletes? Right here on the left. Hey all, Jen Hatfield with the next. Um, Abby, Kitty, um, I, know, I know this is a tough question, but can you just kind of walk me through what you're feeling right now and, and how you kind of process this? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm just a bit empty. I mean, feel anger and just, I love playing in a Columbia uniform. I love playing along these players, but I'm just a little disappointed because that wasn't Columbia basketball out there. But um, yeah, I'm just, yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel pretty similar. Um, I'm disappointed in myself, obviously, because I definitely could have given us more today. Um, and Abby gave us everything, as she always does. Um, so yeah, I mean, I feel pretty bad right now, but I'm going to do everything I can with my team. Abby, when you say it wasn't Columbia basketball, what were some of the things that, that you didn't see, you know, that, that you didn't like out there? Yeah, I mean, from myself it, and my teammates, there was no one person who did good. We all. We're not repping Columbia as uh, the fullest as we should, but um, I mean, it kind of just felt like we got outsmarted. Um, we weren't using our heads out there. Our, I believe we have the best coaching staff in the country. They put together the best plan to beat this team, and we, as players, did not execute. And just out-tussled, we, we let that get in the way of us staying connected throughout the whole game. Um, no. Questions for the student athletes? On the right. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Um, 
on the positive side, you guys broke the all-time program record for consecutive wins, 11 wins yesterday. How, you know, how do you feel about setting that legacy for Columbia basketball? Um, like Coach G mentioned, I mean, we're, we're a great program. I think that, that statistic just mentioned there, yeah, did we have a hiccup tonight? But we've pro proven um, over and over again that we're a team to be talked about. We're setting records in our own book and around the country. So um, I think what you just said kind of proves that. And yeah, we have things to work on, but I do believe we're one of the best teams in the country when we play Columbia basketball. Question right here in the middle. Rob Brown, Ivy Hoops Online. Um, Abby, last year there were a couple times I was talking to Coach about the rumors that Jordan Dingle was going to be looking elsewhere for a variety of reasons. And I asked her, you know, you think Abby's going anywhere? And each time she would look at me and go, no way, not leaving. Um, I just would like you to take a few moments, if you can, to kind of talk about your commitment to the coach and to this program. Yeah. Um as soon as I decided to come here, I fell in love with this program, with this coaching staff. Coach, she didn't only make a commitment to me, but she made a commitment to my parents and my family. And I thought it was the least I could do to stay loyal to this program. And there was no other program or other coach or coaching staff around the country that I'd want to play for besides this woman to the left of me. And um, she's made me a better player and better person. And I'm so happy I've made the decision I did with my gap year and coming here and playing in a Columbia uniform. I wouldn't change it any other way. No. Any other questions for the student athletes? Far left, second row. Um, Ed Madler, the next. Um, Abby, you wanted to ask me, I know this is obviously not how you wanted your last um, Ivy League conference game to go, but you know, even as this being a repeat of you know, you know, last year not being able to come away with the title. What does it mean to you to have been able to, you know, even through this result, do it alongside players like Katie, alongside people who you've been here before with, but like like Meg, like uh, Cecilia, and be able to build that there? Yeah, I mean, I consider Kitty a sister. I mean, all the, all the players I've played with, I consider them family, even the new players that we got this year. Like, we've grown so much. We've been battle tested together. Um, there's nothing I wouldn't do for them. So to, to do the things that we did along those players, it, it means a lot. Um, today sucks, but I still wouldn't trade a uniform with anybody else or any other teammate in the world. So, In, in moments like these, going back into the locker room and, and you know, obviously feeling how, how you all are as a team, what does that do for you sort of individually and sort of to know that these are the people you've been with and getting there the past couple of years? Can you repeat that? G going back, going back to the locker room and just sharing sort of that that, that feeling. How, what does that do for you? I mean, yeah, I, I think it brings us closer. Um, we all care so much. There's not one person on this team that doesn't care. So I think right now we're just sharing that pain. There's a lot of anger, and um, yeah, I, I don't know how else to answer that question yet. We're still processing it, so. One more for Kitty or Abby. Back row, left. Brian Lee, Columbia Daily Spectator. Um, given that Selection Sunday is tomorrow and there's a quick turnaround time before you look at the postseason, how do you take the time to balance processing the loss and learning those lessons while also looking ahead and preparing for whatever comes next in the coming weeks? Um, yeah, I mean, could you do we, yeah, I mean, we have to process this loss tonight. Um, and tomorrow morning, we have to come back together um, and attack whatever is ahead of us. As Coach G said, and as Abby said, we believe we are an NCAA team. Um, so we will be watching that together and we're gonna attack whatever happens. Kitty, Abby, thank you. Questions for coach?
right here up front. Hey, Megan, Doug Farmer, VAP. Was Princeton doing anything differently than the last times you saw? I mean, it just seemed like you guys had so much trouble getting easy baskets on the offensive end, and it seemed they were doing pretty well on the defensive end against you, and then they were scoring shots that they maybe weren't hitting the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think they amped up their pressure, and I don't know, you know, I mean, I think we – they played underneath us a little bit more than we've seen at times when we got deeper into like the paint, you know. So I think there were some small tweaks schematically about what they did, but overall, I didn't think our pace was very good. I mean, we had some, you know, it's not like the beginning of the game; it was just like opened up, right? I mean, it was a game until later in that second half, and honestly, like we just the the lack of stops to get easy scores is really what hurt us. Um, you know, I think our our coverages were just – that was where we got screwed up a lot, you know, whether it was in handoffs or ball screens. And we just didn't do that in game two. Um, I thought we really were able to execute our defensive game plan. So we just had a rhythm offensively, and then it's when you're trying to put something together late in the game. You know, um, we were missing layups that we don't usually miss. And it looks, felt like the rims were real tight then. So, you know, I think we let it be too easy for them early, and g that gave them a lot of confidence to ramp up their style, you know. Both ends. Question here on the left. Just kind of following up on that, was there was there kind of a, a breaking point that you know that they did maybe a play, or was it more of like a slow roll that just kept kept getting away from you a little bit? Uh, the latter, in my opinion. You know, I think that at no point did I think that we wouldn't be able to make a run back into that game. And I think at the end. Even when we were pressing, I was like, hey, like, you got to string together. It can't just be training buckets at that point. I just think they were too comfortable from early on in the game. And it was like we would score, and then they would score. and then Or we would score, they would we'd get a stop, and then we wouldn't score. We had that one possession where we had, like, four base on out of bounds. And, like, we didn't convert. You know, you got you to gotta capitalize. Or you get a foul draw and get to the free throw line. And, you know, I thought they were way more disciplined, Princeton, than they were in the prior game that we just had against them. Um, but, again, like, that's what, you know – it's not just playing the game. There's like the atmosphere, your nerves. Like it's a championship game. This is our first championship, Ivy League championship tournament ever to win, right? So I think people forget like, yes, our program, I'm so proud of how far we've come, but you know, like I was at Princeton when we built that place, you know, like it takes time, you know? Um, and so I would just say like, this is just another step in the right direction for us. We have to know what this feels like, this group of people so that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, so I don't know if I answered your question, Jen. I kind of went off a tangent there, but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think it was one play, honestly. I mean, I think the back-to-back -back ORB kickouts, the threes, that those were tough. Your tangents are always fun with me. Yeah, thank you, Jen. Just, just to follow up, you know, as, as the leader, what do you say to them now? What do you say to them tomorrow? How do you kind of process yourself and kind of get them through this? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm a really honest person. I would say that. I don't really sugarcoat things for them or for my staff and – you know, to them, I just said, like, hey, you know, like, there was things that we challenged us with, like, when we beat them the last time, and I felt like we stepped up to those challenges. And since then, you know, we haven't been, you know, I, I don't know if we were, we were okay. I think we hadn't been the sharpest in some of our games, and I think we kind of turned it around this past week when we, we beat Cornell pretty big up at their place. But, you know, I think, honestly, it's, you know, you still got to be in the moment to go win these games. And I thought we started a little slow yesterday against Harvard, which is a good team. And, you know, it's March. Anything can happen right now. So, you know, I kind of like, – they just got to understand and accept where we're at so that we can continue to go forward because there's season left, right? We know that. I'm hoping it's an NCAA tournament. You know, it should be an NCAA tournament. But um, we'll see what happens, you know, with that. Um, you know, but – their season left, we got we got to figure out what's what's the thing that we're going to do to respond. Question back right. Perry Sook, Big Eleven Sports. Uh, Coach, you talked about your personal resume and why mm -hmm. it seems like you would be a deserving team, but just can you talk about the strength of this conference? You know, with two very tight semifinal games. You know, I'm yep. upset earlier this morning by the one seed in the men's uh, about being more than a one big conference. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's I, I was even talking to Carla before the game and. You know, Penn is playing their best basketball right now. And, you know, we beat Penn by 30 in, you know, in February. And, now, and then they take Princeton on the wire. And who knows whether or not that was a charge or not. That could have been a tie game, right? And, and so I think 
this was one game today that doesn't define our season. And I think everybody could say the same when you look around. But, like, you know, it, it, this conference is, you know, I think in the, in the non-conference, we were the seventh best conference in the country, right? I'm not sure where that stands right now. But, you know, we got some really great ball players in this league. The league keeps getting better. And I'm just really hoping we don't continue to get penalized for being in the Ivy League, which is never going to change. <laughs> so um, I can tell you that it's really great basketball. We've got pros in our league. And, you know, again, I hope the tournament and the committee understands, like, they got to give us a chance to showcase that because I know we can go and beat a lot of teams in that tournament. Thank you. Second row on the left right here. Um, just what was your message in the, in the locker room um, to them? I mean, I told them I was heartbroken. I mean, I knew they were heartbroken. I was like, we're all heartbroken, you know, lots of tears. <laughs> um, you know, I thanked Abby for everything that she's done to build this community and this program and you know, her teammates joined me in that, um, you know, along with our other two seniors, Nicole and Paige. But, um, you know, I think, honestly, it was just – we just had to be raw with each other. Uh, there was no message like, let's raw, raw. You know, like it was more, hey, what are we feeling? Let's meet each other where we're at. Let's tell each other the truth. And, like, we got to be able to handle that. Um, and this team, that team, we've been here before. Like, we've had these talks before. So – I think they handled it well. You know, I think Abby said it. They're still processing. I mean, this is this is not easy to accept or take, especially if you, when you care so much. Question back right. Yeah, Takashi Williams, Columbia Daily Spectator. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just seeing Abby just kind of taking a lot of the fall and along with her teammates when it came down to the reasons why you guys didn't come out with the win today. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of speak on the character that that not only shows from her but also the team and kind of what that speaks to when you're talking about the idea of growing the culture of mm -hmm. college basketball, and, uh, college women's basketball specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, my staff and, and I have worked really tirelessly to have a culture here, right? It's, and people, that's a buzzword. A lot of people talk about culture, but I can tell you, if, if you've been in this community, if you've been in our league, like, you know what Columbia women's basketball is. I'm not talking about our style of play. I'm talking about how we treat each other. I'm talking about how we treat this community, how we interact with the people from the person that opens the door for you when you walk in in the morning to the people that are cleaning up, you know, your trash at night and everything in between in your day. And that's important to me. I told them that. I was like, when I recruited every single one of them, I, I don't want you just to be a great basketball player here. You know, I want you to be a great ambassador of this great university. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's what you saw from Abby and from Kitty. And it's, they're selfless. They're extremely selfless human beings. Um, they take me well, which is a big task. Um, and they handle each other well because we love each other, you know. And then when you love somebody, you can tell them the truth. And that's, that's what you have here. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're a fantastic display of what Columbia women's basketball is. And I think college women's basketball is in a fantastic place right now. Um, you know, you could see by the turnout today that we had and last night. Uh, but, you know, yeah, they're just you – know, I'm, really, I'm really proud of them for how, how they carry themselves. We have time for one more right here in the middle. I'm Caleb Dye with the Columbia Daily Spectator. Um, you could feel the energy from the crowd up until the last second. What has the Columbia community and that energy brought to the team throughout this entire season and especially tonight? Uh, I mean, they're like our sixth player. I, I've been saying that for a while now. It's, it's a community that has become a legitimate college fan base. Um, so many people, other coaches. I mean, Carla, before the game, was like, oh, Meg, like, that one little section's not filled. Like, what's happening? Like, because they don't get fans like that. You know, like, the, the team that's won however many championships, 17, 18, whatever it is now, Dartmouth, who's won 17, Harvard, right, Penn, who's – they don't get fans like us. And so that's not a knock to anybody, but it just goes to show, like, what a community can do when they believe in something, when they feel like they're on a journey with you. And, you know, like, that's why I give huge credit to, to Peter Pilling because he hired me when I was just a kid. I was 31 years old. I had this crazy vision. I told him I was going to come here and win championships. Um, and I, but I was like, we needed the community, and our players understood that. And, you know, they've immersed themselves not just in the campus, but, you know, the greater Harlem community, the Morningside Heights community. Um, and we're seeing that in return. You know, you're seeing the support. You're seeing people come out. You're seeing them sign autographs after games be stopped on the street. Like, that doesn't happen in New York City. So um, I'm extremely proud of that. And, you know, I think that's something that will sustain because 
And I don't think our program is going to change dramatically. Obviously, Abby is a huge part of what we did, but, you know, it's on to the next. You know, we, we got to make sure that we continue to bring great, high-quality people to this program. Coach, thank you. Thank you.